Hi guys! Welcome back to my Russian beauty channel. I'm Stukense and today I will teach you how to cook typical, very tasty, amazing, delicious Russian bread. This bread is a heart and soul of each Russian person. This is Borodinsky bread. Mm. It is so cool and you can do it by yourself. It's not very difficult. So let's cook it together and let's get started. <laughs> What you have to realize is that cooking this type of bread is a very um, strategic process. Um, this bread was called after Borodino, Borodino battle. Maybe you've heard about it. This is uh, the battle from, one, from war. And um, like in war, you need a strategy and you do something step by step. And the same situation is with this bread. So there are several steps and it might seem confusing, but if you just do what exactly what I do, you will get amazing bread. I promise. Just let's do it together. First of all, let's make sweetener. Um, this is first stage and this stage will take you about two hours to process but uh, you don't have to uh, act to do something for these two hours you just prepare sweetener and put it um, to the oven for very very low temperature like 65 deg uh, celsius degrees celsius uh, how can how we will do this sweetener so uh, first of all you need um, rye um, flour because this bread is made from mostly of ripe flour. So take any, uh, any ripe flour you get, the, be the best quality, the better. And um, uh, take half spoon, first of all, half spoon, like not very big amount, like this. Take half spoon, uh, put it to clean uh, teacup, like this and then take very very hot water like about um 100 degrees from your uh, from your teapot uh, take it and um let's pretend uh, you have the same cup not exactly the same but uh, the volume of this cup is uh, 250 um, um, milliliters so it's very standard amount and we fill our cup look with hot very very hot water so let uh, leave like a little bit more maybe two and a half centimeters um from uh, from the bottom from the bottom of your cup so your your cup do not have to be full so if you have some measure measurements or specific instruments you can um, measure um, like two mi 200 milliliters of water but i always do it like this i fill my cup and leave some place and i think it's okay so now we mix our flour inside this water for some time and we try uh, just to um, cut this flour into small pieces. So this flour do not have to be like, you know, with big uh, swimming pieces. Just try to make small pieces. And after some time and leave it, uh, let's say for about several minutes. So this water will be uh, cooling, cooling and uh, the temperature will go down. So we have to wait until the temperature of this mixture uh, will be about 
60 or 65 degrees. This is the best temperature. So let's just mix it and break big particles into small particles <laughs> and wait uh, for several minutes. While we're doing this, uh, we can prepare um, our baking place. <laughs> this, um, how do you call this? Please tell me. So we will prepare this one. Uh, what, I, what I will do, I have 75 degrees, but it's a little bit too much. We need a uh, maximum temperature, 65 degrees here, uh, but it is much better if um, uh, we will have uh, 60 or from 60 till 65, not above, because uh, if temperature will go higher, it will not uh, work very good. But I don't have this exact temperature. What can I do? I can just switch on uh, uh, my oven and I put this temperature, this is the lowest I have. And then sometimes I will just open the door. So I will try to be uh, nearly 65 degrees. So when the temperature went down a little bit, we can add the rest of ingredients to uh, this cup. Um, another two spoons of our very nice and tasty rye flour. Uh, take good spoons like with heel one and two. Cool. So next ingredient will be very special and I understand that uh, next ingredient it might be very hard to find in some places but I think uh, now in the era of internet and online shopping you might, you might find just pretty much everything. So we need the ingredient which called um, malt. It's rye malt. I don't know exactly how to pronounce this one. So it used uh, for producing beer or bread or kvass or some other stuff. Um, it's malt. It's writing like M-A-L-D, malt or malt. And exactly red one. Uh, there is white one. White one is you can add for white type of, type of breads, uh, but red <clears throat> red one it's what we need. The smell of um, this ingredient is just crazy. Look how it looks like. It looks like coffee. <laughs> it smells like chocolate. It's crazy, really crazy. So uh, what we need here is um, to add. A little bit let's take one big spoon with heel like that like ooh, cool and let's add one small spoon like this also with heel nice um, and mix everything so it's almost done uh, Next very, very, very important ingredient, it's coriander. I will check how you call it in English. <laughs> As Google Translator said, it's called coriander. <laughs> so, in Russian we say coriander. <laughs> and um, yeah, we take uh, whole coriander or um, small pieces. Uh, but we do not need too much. I think, well, I think maybe it's too much. It's okay. Okay, let, let it be like this one. No, it's too much, I guess. Or maybe it's okay, I don't know. So if you like coriander, you can add more. If you don't like, you can add. So like this, small, uh, such amount of coriander. We put it to the uh, plate and just uh, crush it into small pieces. So 
So now let's put our coriander to this cup and uh, we need to mix everything very nicely. So take your time, maybe several minutes or so to mix everything. You will not get smooth um, mixture, but try uh, to do like this. First of all, just mix everything and then with your uh, spoon, like crushing big particles into small particles like this. So crush it, crush and crush and crush and just take some time to crush uh, some this. Okay, do not worry if um, you will still get some uh, part, some big particles. It's, it's okay, but try not to leave too big particles. Okay. Now just uh, make small cup, a uh, small cap <laughs> like this. And let's put our cup into oven. So as you see, my oven is open because I don't want temperature to be too high. So let's put just in the cup because the temperature should not go up uh, more than 65 degrees. Carefully, let's put it here. And we need to leave our cup <laughs> in such uh, temperature for uh, two or two and a half hours. Let's wait. Oh, well, my nose is so red. <laughs> okay, if uh, you're going to uh, make this bread, it's better to start doing uh, zavarka. It's called zavarka. In English, it's better, I say, sweetener or sweet, sweet ingredient for the bread, something like this. So it's better to start uh, the day before. Now um, it's around 9 uh, p.m. Uh, in Moscow and I put um, zavarka inside the oven for two hours, for two or three hours. And um, it's very nice because uh, when you zavarka is very long time process and uh, it's better to do beforehand and also uh, it's nice beforehand to create um, your starter your how you call it sourdough sourdough starter you also will need it uh, do you know what is sourdough starter by the way because if you cook if you make any kind of bread maybe you heard about sourdough starter but if you have no idea what is that let me tell you in just in a few words briefly so this is my sourdough starter i have it in a specific container and um, this starter lives in my house for a very long time so basically it's made of flour and water you put together flour and water, mix in... I think it's better to start with equal amount, equal amount of uh, flour and water. You mix it and just leave for one day at a room temperature. Next day you um, do the same at half flour, half water. Next day you do the same. And if um, your sourdough star starter becomes to be very big, you have very a lot of starter, you just uh, one day uh, half of the starter throw away or use in any purpose and leave small amount of this mixture and again and the same amount of flour and water and you just continue doing that and you do not put it to the fridge anywhere. It's just live in my house, <laughs> in my room temperature. I just feed it every day and that's it and when i say feed it every day it means like i put out half of my uh, sourdough starter away and then add uh, flour and water and the same amount just that's it and after 14 days your sourdough starter will be ready to cook this bread so if um, you 14 days two weeks if you um continue doing your sourdough starter after two weeks it is ready to Borodinsky bread <laughs> so 
but let's pretend you already have the starter or you will have uh, when you are going to cook so um, it's also nice the day before uh, together with uh, zavarka at the same time or maybe two hours later i prefer to put uh, this one uh, zavarka in the oven at around uh, 9 p.m. and I prefer to activate my sourdough starter at around 11 p.m. Uh, why is that so? Because of timing, which I already know, it's it's very nice. So 9 p.m. we're going uh, with Zavarka and 11 p.m. we're going with activating sourdough starter. So uh, let's activate sourdough starter. <laughs> By the way, this oven looks so beautiful <laughs> when it is dark. Two hours or two or three hours later, uh, better to, uh, we switch off our oven uh, entirely. Uh, it's still warm and we just leave um, sweetener, this cup with sweetener inside the oven until the morning. So in the morning we will use it. Um, do not leave it for a longer time because um, it's not good. If you want to leave it for longer time than let's say half day, put it in the fridge after it will cool, cool down, cool. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and now we will activate our sourdough starter. Uh, we have our main. Uh, box with uh, sourdough starter um, we will take one spoon of it of it and we will need rye flour uh, first and also you will need uh, this uh, empty bottle with cap um, let's put three three uh, spoons of um, rye flour two and three it's enough um, then we add 80 80 eight zero milliliters of uh, room temperature water and we need to add one spoon of a basic starter so this is basic one you feed it each day and you see it's very very nice and living um, but the, now we activate the starter so we take only one spoon of it and we put it inside here and mix everything together Uh, try to mix everything really uh, nicely so all the flour should be watered and everything should be mixed. Uh, also break uh, big um, pieces of flour into small pieces and uh, do not do it for very long time just maybe for several minutes <clears throat> two or three minutes mix and we will leave this uh, sourdough starter for activation uh, for about um, 10 or from 10 to 12 hours it's enough so that's why we start doing uh, Borodinsky bread in, at the evening of the previous day so we will leave this sourdough starter for the whole night and tomorrow at uh, nine o'clock in the morning uh, we'll be ready to continue the process so it's it's okay now uh, where to put this bottle it's better to uh, put it uh, it's uh, of course should be room, room temperature do not cover it entirely so leave a small place so um, air could come inside this bottle not not do not open it 
and do not close it. Just leave it small, small place for air, and uh, put it somewhere uh, where is n not windy place. You know, nice, just nice and cozy place uh, at uh, at room temperature. It's better to add some protection to this bottle because uh, the sourdough starter can go up and can double size or even triple size so in case it will go out it should not happen but anyway put something underneath maybe a um, plastic ba bag or any other ball or whatever so see you tomorrow oh good morning guys Whew the next beautiful day let's have a look at our sourdough starter and check how is it going wow do you see this sourdough starter in, in the night when i was sleeping he went it went here almost triple sized and then went back and this is a good sign because when it goes up it's very active and we do not use it for this russian bread because very active it's not have sourness enough to make bread happen and then when it goes back that's why we wait for 10 or 12 hours this sourdough starter uh, collect sourness and now it is really nice to use so it's about nine o'clock i guess in the in the in the morning now um let's make a uh, first initial dough now we will make initial dough uh, dough for bradinsky bread is made of two stages first one initial dough in russia we call it apara and then after minimum three hours we will make final dough uh, how we make initial dough? We uh, need uh, for this amount of um, rye, uh, for this amount of ingredients, we will need now uh, 100 milliliters of warm water. How warm this water should be? It should be around 30 uh, degrees. I just used my um, multi wave to heat it half minute just about half minute um, and then you put your finger inside the water if uh, you feel this water is warm but you don't want to remove your finger so it's comfortably warm for your fingers then the temperature is okay uh, also we will need for this uh, dough again rye flour and we will need our sourdough starter from our night um, <laughs> night party and also we will take um, um, sweetener <laughs> or uh, zavarka which was uh, staying in the micro in the oven um, it was cold, cold and it is already cold it have room temperature now but we just take it from here and we will use it right now also um, before we start doing initial dough we can preheat again our oven or any other device you have for about 30 degrees no no more than 30 degrees but if you have a um, high temperature in your room you can use a room temperature but in russia now it's a little bit cold so if i will leave my initial dough in russian room temperature it will not like it so i preheat just for several minutes my uh, oven and then i just switch it off because i have minimum temperature at 75 degrees this is too high for the dough just leave it for several minutes and then switch off so let's make initial dough first take all 
uh, your sourdough starter to the, um, take big one because our dough will be big so take big uh, bowl and put all of this sourdough starter then add uh, warm water here yes then warm water dilute it in this warm water try to take everything that you have in the in the box because there is yeast and bacteria uh, that will make this amazing bread uh, very nice uh, now we're going to add all sweetener so-called sweet I call it sweetener so because it smells like it smells like I don't know mm, it smells like Coffee with chocolate, <laughs> really strange uh, smell. And we put it here. All together. It should look like a creme. Um, like, you know, hot chocolate creme. It really looks like this. And... Uh, also try to take everything you have because it is this um, sweetener makes Bradinsky bread so tasty and so delicious you will just go crazy I trust me but um, if you want to change this ingredient for something else for instance for chocolate or for coffee no it will not work it, it, um, the bread becomes tasty not because of the taste of this um, ingredient the taste of this ingredient is really not tasty if you try it i have tried several times it's not tasty it's not like chocolate uh, but uh, the smell is crazy and this ingredient helps uh, the dough become so amazing in texture and taste but uh, the taste of this ingredient is not nice no i mean it's not like chocolate okay uh, now uh, what we need to add is rye flour so first of all let's mix everything very smoothly after everything is even and smooth we add an additional five spoons uh, five good <laughs> like big spoons of um, rye flour so one two three four and five so this is our initial dough which will ferment ferment fer, fermenting for minimum three hours minimum uh, the longer the better uh, of course you don't have to leave it for weeks uh, but if you have six hours it's pretty pretty cool so three three hours is minimum i will leave it i guess maybe for four hours i, ha I have some time so maybe i will leave it even for six hours i don't know it, it will depends of my schedule i will check my schedule but three hours is still okay so you can start with three hours uh we have to mix of course everything uh, mix everything like this so from bottom just go up and um, moisturize all the flour with this other ingredients and don't worry if you have uh, big particles and something looks uneven you don't have to mix it with mixer 
it's not really necessary but try to um, first moisturize everything and then just break big pieces of uh, the side of the bowl like this Oh, I forgot to say that your activated sourdough starter, which we just added, should be 100% wet. So it just means that it has equal amount of rye flour and equal amount of water. So we mixed everything and let's cover it with um, this, pl this cap, pl plastic cap or you have any other cap and put to the oven um, which is not really hot because you see this this is plastic so if you put it in a hot oven it will be not good and don't forget to set timer <laughs> because you can easily forget about your dough so minimum three hours and up to six maybe even nine hours i think nine hours is pretty much okay it's not maximum but i think it's it's too long time so three or six hours let's wait four hours later i um remove my oh you are so nice and happy we remove our um initial dough and we will make final dough look mm, it's little warm and looks just pretty amazing look how many bubbles smells mm, super cool um to make final dough let's use <laughs> the rest of ingredients what are these ingredients this is our first initial uh, initial dough also we will need uh, sugar it's better to take brown sugar it's very nice you will need um, rye flour and wheat flour white flour uh, also we will add just a tiny amount of yeast um, active yeast or fast any any yeast so uh, and then you will uh, we will need special ingredient um, I personally was not able to find it in Russia um, it's ingredient which is it's called maltozna pataka in English maybe it's maltose sweet syrup or something like this so what is that maltozna pataka is an ingredient uh, which produce um, it's a backup um, ingredient of sugar beet production I don't know exactly how to explain it in Russia it's it's very difficult to find you know I was not able to find it maybe big um, factories they find it somewhere but if you do not have that ingredient do not worry because you can uh, add um, just honey or you can add syrup but, but do not take any syrups which has which have um, a lot of chemicals inside just take very natural syrup for instance I took syrup of um, those Phoenix Phoenix I don't know <laughs> so any syrup but in if you look um, the ingredients of the syrup you will find only one ingredient only one this um, piece you can f take agava or um, any other syrup but very very natural and it's better to take brown colored syrup so because we have uh, dark bread so uh, the syrup should be dark or it might be honey or if you do not have any syrup uh, just use brown sugar or you can um, produce your own syrup um, if you add some sugar to a little bit of water and you heat it and you know boil for some time you will get some, something like inverted syrup okay 
so what are we doing now uh, we take um, 50 milliliters of water 550 put it here then we uh, add a little bit of yeast not too much we do not need too much yeast you see i have uh, this uh, package of yeast and i use it for maybe i don't know for several months because for all my um, bread and for another uh, stuff i do not use a lot but just tiny amount it's very nice oh it's too much <laughs> guys you see this is too much let's go back this is okay maybe again too much we don't need much yeast you see oh this is perfect okay put it to water and let it let it go let it fly let it be happy so yeast uh, then we need uh, one tablespoon of sh brown sugar take brown sugar with very nice smell and you know one uh, tablespoon but you know good tablespoon with heel <laughs> on it like this also put it to the water uh what else do we need also we need one tablespoon of syrup of syrup you see my syrup looks like this see it's very brown and mm, very sweet so we take one uh, spoon cool also it goes to this water with yeast and with everything and we just uh, mix our water um okay so it goes back to the pocket and now we just mix everything together and uh, we wait until our sugar um, decomposed <laughs> in this water Now we add uh, this sweet, sweet, nice uh, water to our initial dough. And um, mix. Mm, amazing. Mix everything um, together for some time okay maybe for one minute or two just mix everything now we add 100 grams or about five um, big tablespoons of white wheat flour and we um, Prosevim, prosevim. So we just um, this flower takes um, uh, takes air very good. So it's very important to your flower mix everything. Na na ni na 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 ni na. And now we will need uh, one cup and one tablespoon of um, rye flour so one cup goes to our Borodinsky bread full cup yay cool and also uh, additional additional uh, one tablespoon yes like this and again mix everything together 
Oop. You can mix this dough with mixer if you have it, or you can use your uh, spoon. It's if you use spoon, it's easier to go from downside to upside like this. And first of all, you just uh, make all your flour wet, and then you just mix it. Uh, try to mix it nicely, so uh, it's better not to have big particles uneven so try to be really really good uh, when you mix uh, this mixture so uh, the final um, sh uh, the final type of your dough is really depends on the ingredients of your flour of all other ingredients so what you uh, what's better to get um, look this is good ingredient for good shape of your dough so you cannot shape it in a round form ever <laughs> because it's not like you know typical bread dough which you can take in your hands no this one is very different this should be really watery but not as water it should have some kind of tension you see so i hope you will get an idea of this type of dough. So this is the final dough. And um, what we have to do now is to leave it for another three, three uh, to four hours to fermenting. But what I am going to do, and this is my know-how, you can also use it. I'm going to bake uh, this dough in, a, in um, some kind of Dutch oven. I have um, such. Let me show you. So this is very nice, nice type of Dutch oven. It's not Dutch actually. I don't know why in English um, uh, videos some people call it Dutch oven. It's it's Russian <laughs> actually. Um, Russian um, specific um, thing which is called Kazan but as I saw in English speaking videos about bread people call such construction a Dutch oven I, ha I had no idea what what is it a Dutch oven I have never used Dutch ovens and I don't know the metal which in which they done so but I think that uh, the Dutch oven which you can find is really similar to uh, this idea Kazan. Kazan is, uh, you know, it's something like this. You have inner side, like big, big part, and you have cap like this. Uh, by the way, this I bought um, of Russian um, company. I like it so much, but I have no idea if you can order it in your country or not. It's called Kukmara. And if you will ever see uh, this brand, you can easily buy um, kitchen um, kitchen stuff because it's super cool. It's made mine particular ma made of um, aluminium, but you can you can find uh, from steel, from any metal. Anyway, so what we're going to do? I decided to put this uh, dough straight to my kazan. And then after three or four hours or fermenting, I'm just uh, will bake. I'm just I just will bake my bread straight in this kazan. So let's do it together. Um, how I do it? I just wet. I have spray or water spray, and I just wet the surface of my kazan just a little bit from from all different sides. So it should be wet. And uh, very carefully, so we don't want to uh, make this dough going everywhere. So just try to be very careful and put all your dough uh, into this form. So this will, um, this will serve you as a form for bread. So put it. It's easier to start from the center and then dough will take the shape of this form by itself. So put everything just right in the middle of this form. And don't worry if it's 
looking not even or not beautiful um, after some time uh, the dough will take the shape and will become more <laughs> more nice so we put it here but try not to cover um, sides of this form uh, with dough put it just right in the middle and let it um, go by itself to take the form yeah And we close um, Kazan and as we made previously put it to warm place warm like 30 degrees it is very important then you will not put your dough in the temperature which is higher than 40 degrees because after 40 degrees for zero after this temperature our um, bacteria and yeast will feel very bad and might die so we need temperature 30 degrees so uh, for three to four hours again let me check yeah it's okay i guess let's put it here About four hours, hours later, um, we are now ready to continue. Let's uh, take out our dough and be careful. Now we do not want to shake our dough because it formed a structure inside. So be careful right now. And do not shake it. Just be careful. And uh, now I'm going to preheat my oven to um, temperature about 270 degrees Celsius. Uh, we need high temperature in the beginning of this process because we want to uh, form uh, skin of our bread and this skin will we like it to be thin and soft so we produce really much heat in the beginning and then we can low temperature so i think for about 15 minutes we will uh, um, use high temperature 270 and then after 15 minutes we low temperature to let's say 250 or 240 uh, celsius and uh, let's say for half hour or maybe 45 minutes from half hour to 45 minutes something like this uh, we will cook our bread while our oven is uh, preheated let me show you our dough you see it's really nice it formed a nice shaping structure and what we want to do now we want to uh, add a little bit of water to the top of our bread so it should be wet and then we want to add some coriander on the top so I have here um, some coriander, which is cracked a little bit. <laughs> and we just add this coriander to the top of our bread. This is very typical for this type of bread to have a um, nice topping of coriander. Mm, it smells so beautiful and amazing. Cool. Uh, to cook this bread we do not need any vapor so we will put kazan 
without uh, cap. So we uh, switched off our cap. And also before putting our bread into the oven, uh, let's add some water to the top, just a little bit. So it will help uh, to form uh, the cover. So uh, when bread will expand, um, the cover will not stick very, very soon, very fast. So important moment. <laughs> I always feel a little bit worried when I put something into the oven. Okay, let's do it. <sighs> yes, very hot temperature. Yes. We put it here and let it go. Yes. And now uh, temperature should be around 260 for... Do we have such temperature? No, temperature is much lower. Okay, we will wait. So for about 15 minutes uh, on maximum temperature. There are two basic types of cooking this bread. First one is when you cook it on, on high temperature, but for shorter time. For instance, you can cook it on 260 or 265 degrees Celsius and you cook it for 25-30 minutes or you can cook it only in the beginning for about 10 or maybe first 15 minutes at high temperature the same high temperature and then you lower the temperature uh, for 240 like this and you cook it longer so it uh, all time it, it every time it depends um, on the temperatures um, which your oven support and some some oven support only um, the highest temperature for instance if your highest temperature is 250 or 230 um, then you just cook this bread longer uh, approximate time of cooking this bread is from one half uh, half hour to one hour uh, if the temperature is really high then half hour if temperature is lower then you cook it for one hour so i will show you how um, the final result shows so you can uh, you can uh, let's say de um, develop your own strategy and see what you get from your particular oven after 45 minutes of baking so first half hour it was 260 but i don't think my oven very precise so maybe it was lower a little bit so it was half hour to, to 260 and then 15 minutes uh, something around 230 like this so i switch off my oven and leave uh, the bread inside let's say for another maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes or even half hour it depends of your oven of construction of your oven so it depends on, on um, a lot of situations but check for your bread um, it has to have dark surface not like um, coal but pretty much dark like dark very dark brown surface and uh, that's it <laughs> uh, so basically our bread is ready what we are doing now we'll leave it here and then i will show you a specific idea which i um, found to cool the bread after the baking oven this is it so i have uh, just metal thing it's from the oven uh, this is just covering uh, so bread will uh, give some dust so just the cover and this is uh, um, how you call this one this when you zh, um, carrots or some vegetables when you um, crushing uh, vegetables so you put it like this 
and then you will just put the bread here on the top and it will cool uh, in a very natural environment and um, on the top we just use towel uh, use very light towel so uh, bread should cool up um, for about uh, several hours until you can even uh, cut it so three hours four hours is a, is a good timing and after this bread will cool down it's better to wait a little bit more for about five or six hours before you will eat it uh, because only after that time Borodinsky bread will be um, ready so uh, there are a lot of processes will go inside the bread and um, yeah so <laughs> let's wait for our bread so our bread was one hour in oven um, in total I mean in total and now let's um, take it off Hop. that's how it's look like okay I will show you later to release your bread uh, from the kazan just uh, flip it <laughs> upside down and leave for some moment and voila uh, voila <laughs> your bread is fully released the next day after our bread become in like room temperature uh, we will try it let's do it together so uh, it's nice to cover your bread with tissue with uh, waffle Mm. Towel. Towel, yes, with waffle towel. So uh, it will cool in waffle towel. This is how bread looks like. I think it's really nice. You see? Look. You can choose any shape you like. You can choose round shape. You can choose uh, shape of a brick it's very typical for Russia but round shape is also very typical every shape is typical you can even make heart shape if you like mm. let's uh, try How beautiful it is and very crusty do you hear <laughs> okay let's try mm. <laughs> smells delicious Wow, this bread is tasty. Mm. When I travel around the world, I miss only one thing in Russia. Okay, not only one, but this is the most. <laughs> I miss Russian bread. Mm. You will never try any bread like this anywhere. Only you can make it by yourself. Maybe you can find it in the shop, but I was not able to do that. Mm. Mm. Please try it yourself and tell me in the comments how do you like Russian Borodinsky bread? Mm. I think this is the most tasty dish in the world. Mm. So so tasty and cool see you in my next videos do not forget to subscribe to russian beauty oh by the way let's ask our friend russian bear 
from Russian Bear channel to try this bread. Russian Bear! <laughs> Russian Bear! <laughs> Hi. Hello, guys. Oh. Uh, Hi. Borodinsky, why it's called Borodinsky? Uh, because in Russia we had, when it was war with Napoleon, with French, in 1812. He's smart. Uh, we had final battle with Napoleon, Russian, from Russian side it was General Kutuzov, Kutuzov, f, f, f. he uh, had a huge battle with Napoleon at Borodins, uh, Borodinskaya field, Borodinskaya, because there is a, like a village, uh, Borodin, uh, I think Borodinskaya, and it was kind of from there, this bread, the name of this bread from 1812. And when, they ate this bread. Do you remember, <laughs> maybe you read um, War and Peace, War and Peace by Tolstoy, famous Russian writer. So it, there was about Borodinsky battle. And this is Borodinsky chleb. So Borodinsky bread. It smells delicious, really delicious. Uh, very nice structure, you see, just beautiful. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. Perfectly cooked. Mmm. Very nice one. Previous bread, which you can say made, it was a bit like uh, muslin. So it was possible to eat it with one bite, like, <laughs> and this one, it's standard a bit more, and I liked. So, actually, there are a lot of types. You could make a lot of different variations of this bread, and it's my favorite. So, guys, highly recommended, recommending to try it. And if you will be our guest one day, we will make such bread for you. Bread and salt, Russian traditional dish. Um, like, welcome, welcome dish. See you. Bye. Bye.